Hello, exiles. I have a very strange build guide update here. Uh, it kind of touches on something that I think I've felt more in the game than I've really understood. Uh, something that came from someone who hopped into a live stream and kind of explained knowledge they had from playing Ward Loopers. And if you play Ward Loopers, you probably know immediately this is going to have something to do with cooldown reduction. And the thing about cooldown reduction is on the surface, that doesn't seem like something you would want to apply to Kitava's Thirst. After all, we're talking about an item that has a 0.1 second cooldown. You have to get up to 20 casts a second, theoretically, to cap that out. Theoretically. Uh, turns out that's, that's not the reality of the situation. It took me a little bit of finagling to show this in a way that would be reflected in POB, but I did manage to do it, and I'm going to show you now, and basically show you what it's all about. So, uh, I have some cast speed increases here, because POB will only really show you the average you're getting if you actually have all of the cast speed to get it done. If we go to 99% cast speed, increased, on top of what we already get when we fully spin up, the trigger rate goes 7.56. And what's interesting is, if we start increasing that number, it goes down. It keeps going down. In fact, it gets worse and worse and worse. Meaning that we're hitting the cap, and we're actually increasing our cast speed to a point where the alignment is bad. This is how it works with most cooldown trigger things. Which is to say, it's just a suboptimal amount. But why is the optimal amount 7.56? That doesn't make any sense either. That said, if we go over to our boot slot here, which is, this is an upgrade I've just recently gotten. Uh, my piss poor pair of boots here has the 5% increased cooldown recovery rate stat. Of course, if there were a server discrepancy because of server tick rates, having a, I believe it's a 99 server tick rate update, it'd be very small. Very, very tiny amount. Here's what happens now when we add a whole lot more cast speed, just to reflect the changes. The effective trigger rate is now 10.10, .10, as you would expect. Just like with the other one, if I go up, we actually start losing effectiveness. Going up a lot does the same, it goes lower and lower, and if we go down, it does about the same as well. The reason why this is important for the build is that Technically, the effective trigger rate here that it's showing 5.94 is uh, it's 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 right, but it's also wrong, if that makes sense. Taking these boots on and off doesn't appear to do anything to the trigger rate. But as we all know, how the game's information is recorded on the surface is not always completely honest with what you experience in the game. There are tons of little things with the math of the system that can cause it to swing in either direction. In this case, specifically, our effective trigger rate is six. That is based off of the idea that we are having periods of more triggers than expected and periods of less triggers than expected. And that's where this cooldown recovery stat comes into play. If we have a second where we get zero triggers, right? We go a full second, that's like 11 casts fully spun up. That's a loss of DPS. But to offset that, there should also be seconds where we get most of the triggers, where we can get 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. However, without this cooldown reduction, that's actually been kind of stopped. And I think some people, myself included, have probably noticed a little bit that when they go full bore on a target, they never really get like a super spike where they really see it spin up to more than they're used to seeing. It's always kind of bottlenecked at a certain point, and it's even become a little more noticeable with the Desecrate tech on Arcanist brand, where we just have the excess corpses to really see all the explosions happening. This 5% CDR seems to help with that quite a bit. For the sake of kind of demonstrating this, I've jumped into the game. This is something that's really hard to show in person because we're just dealing with too many procs per second to really be realistic about it. That said, I can put Desecrate and Detonate and Obtaining in this together to kind of simulate a little bit how it works. So to simulate things, I've taken my boots off. I just have Detonate Dead of Chain Reaction in. And, um, it spins up pretty good. I mean, it's, it still looks fantastic. There's no denying it. If we put in Desecrate, I have a special Kitaba Thirst here with extra green sockets to show this. We can also get the Desecrate procs, which gives us more corpses to work with and shows you kind of how it works in action. 
Again, good proc rate. This is what it looks like when we have the extra 5% CDR. I'll be honest, um, <laughs> it's hard to tell. Most of my experience in the idea that this is working has come from actually testing it in the game. It's subtle, it's when you bear down, but it does seem to be in the realm of somewhere between 12 to 20% more DPS. Not all the time, of course, it is a proc based build that has just a 50% chance. Sometimes you're gonna run up to a boss and you're gonna hit all the good corpses on your Desecrate and it's gonna, it's gonna melt instantly other times. You're going to get low triggers and you're only going to hit on Earth or, or weaker corpses. But um, this does seem to be a damage increase overall in, in an extended fight, like against the Pinnacle boss. It's going to be a little more noticeable. And I have noticed it when fighting uh, map bosses, conquerors and the like that, yes, having this 5% CDR seems to be a DPS increase. And uh, honestly, because it's so hard to measure, I almost didn't want to make this video. But the thing is, uh, that 5% CDR goes in an Eldritch Implicit that we weren't getting much use out of anyway. This is pretty free. It's pretty free for a very large throughput increase. So if you're not using this, start. Uh, it's good. And if it's not good, I'll probably post a retraction video. But uh, I'm sure anyone who works with CDR and understands proc rates could probably pull up a tool and explain it even a little better than me. This was the best way I could find to reflect it in POB though. In POB, you cannot get over 7.5 procs a second, which is an issue because even though our effective proc rate won't go that high, probably ever. I mean, you'd need so much more cast speed to get there. I'm sure it's possible somehow. The thing is, it can go there in a vacuum due to random chance. And if we miss out on that, our effective proc rate is actually going down. I'm guessing it's closer to five, whereas in POB it says six. But with that 5% CDR, you get that back, and that's a very large increase. So if you're playing the build, try it out. Tell me what you think. I guess I'd like to get some community input if people can feel it. It's really hard to measure, but I do feel, I, I mean, I felt it, right? It's, it's a feel thing, but also it might be like a placebo effect. I don't think it is. I think this is the real deal. It actually seems to be quite strong. So give it a try. I mean, it, it is reflected numerically in places like Path of Building. So I'm even more inclined to believe it's real. And again, the investment is not that high. It's it's one lesser Eater of Worlds implicit modifier on your boots. And that's actually so good for the build because we really only have two pieces of equipment, our chest and our boots, where we can do that. And we kind of dodged a bullet because the Searing Exarch implicit on boots is bone offering effect, which is more or less block. So we uh, we got lucky. All four of our uh, Eldritch Implicits that we can make use of are now all like very good and impactful for the build. And that's that's rather exciting on its own. Single target for me has been far above what Wildwood was, thanks to the Desecrate Arcanist brand tech. And in Wildwood, we had much better tools for scaling. Like I, I don't even have my full on Earth setup yet, and I feel like my DPS is better. It's It's been a great league so far for me. I know the league mechanic hasn't been good, but GGG, they are working on that, you know, I don't know if you've seen it. Maybe I should link to that in the description as well. They've kind of what they're working on. And honestly, they they hit every one of the community CERNs right on the head of the nail and it's all going to work out. So, yeah, look forward to the next week. I think Path of Exile has been fun, at least for me on this build, probably for you on this build, too, if you're playing it. And it's going to get a lot more fun going forward just because, A, honestly, we I, I keep finding, well, partly me also... Uh, I almost did this. I wrote the name down because I wanted to give this person proper credit. Tiago Alfonso here on YouTube was the person who came into my chat and suggested this to me. And honestly, absolute king. I mean, have a good one, Exiles. Have a great one, Tiago. You really helped us all out, I think. This is a massive improvement to the build. And it's it's one more step of bridging the gap of the single target that kind of happens between this build and some of the other Detonate Dead of Chaining builds out there. So, I'm excited. I'm having a great day. I hope you all do too.